بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونؤذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فهو المهتد وما يدل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek help from Him. We ask forgiveness from Him. We repent to Him and we seek refuge in Allah from our own evils and our own bad deeds. Anyone who is guided by Allah is truly guided and anyone who has been left astray will find no one to guide him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the only one without any partner, and I bear witness that the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyu alladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, be aware of Allah with correct awareness and awe inspired awareness and die not except as Muslims. Ya ayu alladhina amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa may yu'ti allaha wa rasoola faqad faza fawzan azima. O you who believe, be aware of Allah and speak a straightforward word. He will forgive your sins and repair your deeds. And whoever takes Allah and his prophet as a guide has already achieved a mighty victory. In the opening verse of Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, O mankind, show reverence towards your guardian Lord who created you from a single person, created of like nature his mate, and from the two of them scattered like seeds, countless men and women. Be conscious of Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and show reverence towards the wombs that bore you. Show reverence towards the wombs that bore you. For surely Allah ever watches over you. My dear sisters and brothers, in one of his khutbas, Dr. Rushdi told us about Gabriel's hadith. In that hadith, the angel Gabriel asked Prophet Muhammad wasallam three questions. Some of you may know this hadith, and some of you may not have heard about it. The three questions were, what is Islam, what is Iman, and what is Ihsan? From the reply, we learn that Ihsan, excellence, is the highest level of worship. That's when you worship Allah as if you actually see him there right in front of you. And you know with absolute certainty that even though you cannot see Allah, then you know surely he sees you. That is ihsan, that is the highest level that a Muslim's worship can aspire to. Today I want to share with you one of the keys that will give us access to this higher level of faith. The key to ihsan, the key that opens the door to excellence of worship, is to trust Allah. Now what does it mean to trust Allah? It's quite easy to say, I trust Allah, I have iman, I, have, I trust Allah. But it's actually much harder to do that with your heart and soul over and over again all the time, every day, in every situation. Trusting Allah completely, it takes practice and serious determination. Trusting Allah is not just a slogan. It's not just a nice sounding th theory. Trusting Allah means that you set aside your personal likes and your dislikes, your fears, your anxieties, your prejudices, you set aside your lower nafs, your ego, and you do the right thing. You do it with a firm belief 
that Allah knows best always and Allah will deliver a good result whatever your own fears and anxieties might be. Now most of us are not Arabic speakers and we therefore have to make a special effort to understand Arabic and the terms that are used in the Holy Quran, in the sacred texts. Words can sometimes be so inadequate, but it's all that we have. It's always possible that something gets lost in the translation. That's why those of us who use English translations, it's good to use more than one, because you find that Yusuf Ali has a different way of explaining something than uh, Muhammad Ali, for example, or, or any of the other translators. Or Mabitu Pickthall, those are two very popular ones in the English language. It's very difficult to understand all the nuances of the, of the terms that are used in the Quran. Iman, faith, in Arabic does not just mean blind belief. It's not just enough to say that Allah exists or to believe that Allah exists. It also implies an element of trust, and this is very important. To have Iman is to have faith in Allah and to trust him that he will take good care of us. And this doesn't happen overnight. As I said, it needs practice and cultivation, and especially when you face a situation of difficulty. Allah is our guardian and our protector. Because we have Iman, we must put our trust in Allah before anything or anyone else. The Quran reminds us, وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا And indeed, Allah is the best guardian and best protector. The Quran constantly urges us as believers to put our trust in Allah. But we human beings are forgetful. And you know, one of the meanings of uh, the word, the word uh, for, for human being or humankind in Arabic is insan. And one of the meanings of insan is someone or something who is forgetful by nature. That is why the Quran reminds us that dhikr, the constant remembrance of Allah, is the best cure for our forgetfulness. There's a beautiful verse which says, Alladina amanu wa tatma innul kulubuhum bi dhikrillah. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma innul kulub. Those whose hearts find peace in the remembrance of Allah, for surely in Allah's remembrance do hearts find peace. Now let's take an example of using, uh, of trusting Allah. When we run into a financial difficulty, and we all have that from time to time, we run into some financial difficulty. What's the first thing that we do? Now, most of us would run off to speak to our bank manager, or we go to a wealthy friend or a relative. Quite often, the last thing we do is to ask Allah for help. It seems that when all else fails, when our bank manager shakes his head, or our rich friends and our family make their excuses, only then do we turn to Allah for help, don't we? Shouldn't it really be the other way around? Shouldn't we always turn to Allah first, not last? But there we are, such forgetful creatures, and yet Allah loves us and Allah forgives us, and he helps us out of our difficulty anyway. Now, we have to learn how to trust Allah. And... We can learn a lot from reading about the early days of Islam when Nabi Muhammad وسلم, and his illustrious companions faced so many hardships. They faced so many difficulties. In fact, at one time, as we all know, there was uh, such a, a danger that Islam was going to be wiped off out completely. The anger of the Quraysh and the vindictiveness of the Quraysh was such that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had to take a party of his uh, followers and send them to Ethiopia to seek uh, protection from one of the kings there in Ethiopia. They faced a lot of difficulty, but they did trust Allah always, unwaveringly, un un unfailingly. Throughout their ordeals, their faith in Allah never wavered. Enduring hardship with patient perseverance is an essential way for us to show our faith and trust in Allah. 
It's in a crisis that we show what we're made of. When we face a personal calam calamity, do we panic? Do we resort to desperate actions? Do we throw aside our moral and ethical values? Or do we simply accept that Allah is testing us? Do we show our complete faith and trust in Allah? Do we do the right thing even though it may be painful for us or difficult for us? And this is the asset test. A true believer always does the right thing in the right time, at the right time in the right way. Even if it seems to be against our own interests, Allah commands us to be just and to be fair. And if you read in Surah Nisa, we find some verses there that deal with justice. And one verse which reads, O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah, even as against yourselves or your parents or your kin, your family, or whether it be against rich or poor, for Allah can best protect both. Follow not the lusts of your hearts, lest you swerve. And if you distort justice or decline to do justice, then truly Allah is well acquainted with everything that you do. My dear brothers and sisters, when we tell lies, when we cheat, when we take advantage of other people, when we exploit somebody's weaknesses or, 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 or misfortune, then we are actually betraying a lack of trust in Allah. Remember that just two weeks before Ramadan and before, it's, it's January now, but before you know it, Ramadan will be here. Time moves so quickly. Two weeks before Ramadan, uh, it, during the month of Shaban, the middle of Shaban, there is a special night known as Laylatul Bara'at or Laylatul Nas Shaban. And this is the night when Allah decrees the rizq, the provision of every human being, every one of us, male and female, old and young, Allah decrees your provision and my provision for the rest of the year, for the next year. And that is the decree. It cannot be changed. Whatever we do, we cannot increase or decrease that provision that Allah has decreed. And it's very important for us to remember this. No man and no woman will earn a penny more or a penny less than what Allah has already decreed for you. Just remember that. The only choice we have is do we earn it with Allah's good pleasure and his blessings or do we earn it with his anger? And that's a crucial decision that we have to make. The actual amount, as I said, cannot be changed. Sometimes people think they're going to catch, catch you out here, catch you out there, tell a lie here, exaggerate a bit there. But in the end, they are just doing, they're only harming themselves. And we are harming ourselves if we be behave that way. All the lying, all the cheating, all the greedy and unethical business practices will do nothing to increase our wealth. Remember that, my dear brothers and sisters. <coughs> it only gets our share along with Allah's displeasure. On the other hand, if we do things the right way, the moral way, the ethical way, the halal way, then we get our share, which has already been decreed for us, Plus, we get Allah's good pleasure and his blessings along with it. There is a very beautiful verse, my dear brothers and sisters, in Surah Talaq, verse number two, which says, وَمَيَّ تَقِلْ لَهَا يَجَعَلَّهُ مَحْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَخْتَسِبُ وَمَيَّ تَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِ it's a very important verse to remember. And this is the second verse in Surah Talaq. And whoever is cautiously aware of his duty to Allah, whoever is cautiously aware of his duty to Allah, Allah will always prepare for him a way out of his difficulty. And he provides for him from sources that he could never have imagined. And if anyone puts his trust in Allah, then sufficient is Allah for him. For Allah will surely accomplish his purpose. For truly, all things has Allah appointed a due proportion. Very good to remember that. And here we are reminded of the fruits of faith. This is what Allah promises us when we put our trust in him. It's very significant that these words appear at the beginning of Surah At-Talaq. 
The subject is divorce. Divorce, as you know, it's legal. You can do divorce in, in Islam. It's allowable, but it's also something that Allah hates. It's the most hateful thing that is allowed, but Allah hates it. When a marriage is ended, it becomes difficult for a woman and a man to treat each other with fairness and justice, let alone with generosity. This is why Allah appeals to both to put their trust in him and not to be driven by anger or resentment, however they might be feeling. Allah promises us a way out of the difficulty if we place our trust in him. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri al-mursaleen Muhammadan nabi al-ummi wa ala ali wa sahbi ajma'in Inna Allah wa malaykatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم ولا آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi wa aliyya wa azim. Glory to Allah, praise to Allah. There is no power, no strength except from Allah. My dear sisters and brothers, imagine this scenario. Especially now with the collapse of these big businesses like uh, Carillion and so forth. There's a lot of uncertainty in the job market and many people are going to be losing their jobs and having all kinds of difficulties. So imagine for a moment that you're working happily in the job of your dreams. And then one fateful day, you are told that your services are no longer needed. You've just lost your job. What's the first thing that you do? Now most of us would immediately go online Start Googling around for a new job, putting up, uh, updating your CV, and so forth, looking for the application forms, filling in the application forms. And that's the most logical thing to do, isn't it? But one scholar gives us some different advice. He says, as soon as you find yourself in a difficult situation, take a deep breath, turn to Allah and say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Do you all know what that means? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. I've lost my job. I don't know where I'm going to pay my mortgage. I don't know how I'm going to, you know, feed my family. But they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. First thing, first thing, before you do anything else, before you go and look for uh, updating your CV and looking for another job. You are first of all saying, Ya Allah, I trust you. You'll look after me. And... The, good, the outcome is going to be a good outcome. And then, before you start doing all the logical things, you give some sadaqah. You had 100 pounds saved away somewhere in your savings account for a rainy day, and now it's the rainy day. But first of all, you give 5 pounds or 10 pounds or 20 pounds, whatever you feel you want to give. Give it to someone. Give it to a, a charity. Give it to someone in a who needs it more than you do. And you're reminding yourself, look, I'm facing a calamity, I'm facing a difficulty now, but there are millions of people out there who are in a much worse situation than I am. Look at the people in Rohingya, the Rohingya people in, in, in Burma, the people in Palestine, the people in, in so many other parts of the world. They've been in Syria and so forth. So you've lost your job, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big problem, but let's keep things in perspective. You've taken a hard knock, but it's not the end of the world. And once you realize that you are actually millions of people who are much worse off than you are, then your own problem actually begins to look more like a slight inconvenience, a minor inconvenience. Inshallah, Allah will help me to get another job, maybe even a better job than the one I had before. 
Put your trust in Allah. This is what we mean by Iman, by putting trust in Allah. And you have absolute certainty that Allah will help you. When you've done that, you can now go back and look for that new job and deal with the situation that you have to deal with. I promise you, my dear brothers and sisters, if you put your faith and trust in Allah all the time, every time, and especially when you're having a difficult time, don't get angry, don't panic, and Allah Ta'ala will show you a, a good outcome. And I promise you, you'll be rewarded with a better job than the one you had before. It's happened to me, my dear brothers and sisters. I'm talking from experience. And, uh, and, and I can tell you, it does work. My last job, I was uh, made redundant. And my wife and I started a business. And alhamdulillah, for the last 30 odd years, we've never had to look back again, uh, look for a job again. So Allah Ta'ala always helps to find you out of, uh, help you out of a difficulty if you put your trust in him. My dear brothers, let us try to memorize this beautiful uh, hadith related by Ibn Abbas. Keep Allah in mind and you will find him in front of you. Remember Allah in times of ease and he will recognize you in times of distress. What hit you could not have missed you. And what missed you could not have hit you. Remember Allah's decree. Know that victory comes with patience. Relief follows distress. And ease follows hardship. Beautiful hadith. And uh, I've, I've had to refer, to refer to it many times in my life. And with those inspiring words of wisdom from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, my dear brothers and sisters, we conclude our khutbah. But before we go, I want to just remind you that I am not a scholar of Islam, and none of our khatibs here are actually trained scholars. We are laymen like yourselves coming to do the khutbah and doing the duty, do, trying to help our community. We also have a number of young people who have now started to do the khutbahs for us. Uh, we can consider this uh, jamaat here as a, a nursery for young khatibs as well. So I, I ask you to exercise some patience uh, with us because we are not scholars. And don't ask us to deliver fatwas or decisions on anything. We're not qualified to issue fatwas. But uh, be patient. And because most of us are not Arabic speaking, there are a few Arabic speaking khatibs. Uh, our pronunciation sometimes come and correct us if you like. But always give us encouragement, especially for the younger, the newer khatibs. Give them, be encouraging, be positive, and, uh, and be patient with us. Thank you very much. And if you know of any other people who, are, who have got, a, got experience of doing khutbahs, uh, you know, please refer them to us so that we can also benefit from their knowledge and their experience. Thank you very much. Inna laha ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa ita izir qurba wal وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَخْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِيِ يَعِذُّكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ فَاذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَسْنَعُونَ Surely Allah commands justice, good deeds, and generosity to others and to relatives, and he forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He instructs you so that you may be reminded. And Allah says, Remember me and I will remember you. Be grateful to me and do not reject faith. And without doubt, remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing in life. And Allah knows the deeds that you do. Amin. Aqimus Salat. Allah.